everything is good and wholesome here in this show, not in the real world. The real world doesn't exist. Only the magical world of Doremi exists. Hello and welcome to the No No Show podcast. Here with your host, Craft Dwarf, and my co-host, MathWiz. Say hello, MathWiz. The Ojimajos don't have to file their taxes. <laughs> Lucky for them. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, it's tax season, so we're ignoring Doremi and Tot. No, anyway, um, so this is the, uh, <laughs> to really, uh, to tie the jokes together, you know, this season, it sure was, it, it was anything but a taxing experience. <laughs> no, this season, like, uh, you know, obviously this is the third episode, and, uh, you know, I'll mention when we talk about spoilers, but it's gonna be very early, because, like, just watch season one, or the first discussion, if you're interested in, in this show, but, like, the show is still very much Dory Me, but also, like, I don't know if it's just I'm enjoying it more and more the more, like, I, we get of these characters, or just, like... Because this episode had maybe, like, two episodes that I just wasn't as into, at most. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember at the, the start of the third season, it was, like... Because usually, like, by a certain point, it's like, okay, and, you know, there's an episode that's kind of just, like, not necessarily bad, but not, like you know like knock your socks off good but mm -hmm. it just like kept going and it's like okay staying solid and then it's like a core in and it's like oh okay we're still going yeah and it didn't really feel going. like it didn't really like if there there may be some like i won't call them disappointments but it's like like the strongest emotional climax of the show was not the ending it was mm -hmm. an, a certain side character's arc that was really fucking good um right so like oh no the ending of the show wasn't the best part what a fucking tragedy like the fact that the, <laughs> that's less of like the ending was bad like it was perfectly fine it's just like the other stuff was like that i'm thinking about is just that good um, or at least it got to me that much so like like yeah the the show is just still really fucking solid and really good and it, it it's it, like <laughs> it's it's and i feel like also just you know maybe having more context like on a hypothetical rewatch after finishing it i might even appreciate st certain things more because like this season did like follow up on some stuff from earlier seasons while also doing its own new stuff with you know new characters and such and uh yeah um though i guess before we start in the real discussion and go into spoilers i did want to say um our plan with uh the this the doremi stuff specifically is uh we're going to just watch it in release order. So we will watch the Nai Show OVA, which takes place during this season. But uh, I figure just like, since it's a podcast, right? Like based on the, like if we were, if I was watching it on my own, I might have watched most of Nai Show already. But uh, um, I mean, it, it is also possible that like we could watch Nai Show like as we're going through Dokkan and then just like talk about it afterwards or like rewatch it maybe. Yeah, uh, uh, maybe. I, I mean, don't know. If, uh, if it if it was that uh, pressing of a matter, there's probably a way we could make it work. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm not too fussed about it myself, but uh, you know, so like our uh, the current idea I had was to yeah, next uh, Do Review one would be Dokkan, the fourth season, and then we do another episode because hopefully by the time we finish Dokkan, we would the movie would be out and subbed. Uh, which it, I mean, it doesn't take place like as I understand it, it's the characters are like. They grew up watching Doremi as kids, and, like, so this, I guess that's the... I don't know exactly what the premise of the movie is, but, uh... Yeah. Like, yeah, um, so the idea would be to talk about Nai's show and the movie in one podcast, so we'd had the first four on the first four seasons, and then we'd have one for all, like, the kind of extra stuff, basically. Um, that's the idea, at least. So we'll see what happens, and it depends on if the movie... When the movie gets subbed, if at all, basically, so, uh... I do think it also kind of works because like where Moto and like this season was the ending was much less like definitive and like, oh, no, what's yes. going to happen next? We're going yeah, going into spoilers. So stop right now if you uh, have any interest in watching this show, because uh, yeah, well, the title of the episode was funny because it's like goodbye, which apprentices. And I'm just like, oh, here we go again. They're going <laughs> to lose their powers. And then next season, in one week, uh, the the next episode's going to start, and they're going to get the powers again, just like the last two seasons, right? But it's like, no, goodbye witch apprentices, because they're witches now. <laughs> like, they made it. They did it. They've done it. They, it's finally. And yeah, they, they didn't resolve everything. Like, they deliberately left certain things hanging, where before, in both the seasons, like, this could have been the end of the show right yeah. but now in this case it's like no they're going more they're, they're planning to go for further and there is one more season of the show so it's like oh okay that's it. so it, 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 they they got me they like they knew what i was thinking when i saw goodbye witch apprentices and then they they, they pulled a a twist on me <laughs> and i was like mm -hmm. okay cool i was i was glad for it um and maybe that's why uh i mean like 
Hmm. Because, uh, you know, I mean, the ending, again, like, it wasn't my favorite part of the show, but it was still good. But maybe it is because, like, you know, this ending was less conclusive so that uh, the ne- it could go into the next season easier, which will just make that season a little bit better, maybe. So, um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, especially with uh, the, the change that was teased <laughs> in the episode preview. <laughs> which, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, I, don't, I don't remember if Dory Me Sharp, like, the final episode had a teaser for the first episode of Moto. Like, maybe it did, and my memory is bad. Um, I, I don't remember. Because I, I usually don't watch... Th- well, well mm, that's right. You know, I don't think that because usually this is the first season that they did the previews after the ending theme, because the first two seasons, they show the preview for the next episode before the ending theme. Um, so I don't remember. Well, no, no. This season, it was it was just that one episode, I think, that they did the preview after the fact. Um, in my download, all that was for all of them. That was not the case in mine. Okay, we, wait, but so you had a you had a newer batch of files. Yes, my tor- that's right because my torrent is the one that I got for this season specifically. It it has everything Doremi in it, every single season, and the fucking four kids dub of all. I think uh, that's what magical Doremi is. Um, so it's it basically so I you know I could just you know so yeah my I guess I do have a different download, but I, I assume the tra- it looked the the translation looked the same like the same kind of subtitle font as the other seasons. So it was I think it was just a. Uh, a compilation of everything basically but uh hmm, interesting okay. but I, I guess they did make some changes because yeah the uh my previews were at, like after the episodes so okay i didn't i didn't know that they were different i thought that was like I, it was my fault because i changed the show didn't change it was me <laughs> um okay good to know <laughs> but uh anyway uh I guess to talk about, like, I think one of the reasons I think this season might have just been a little stronger overall is because, like, it starts out with a bit of a, a shakeup in that, like, the class is split, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, in this class that we've been familiar with for two seasons now, right? With, with the same group of characters that were gradually introduced in the first season, and then some of them have gotten even more context in the second season. But then what, the, with the third season, what I think worked about it is because, and maybe this is my biases, uh, but my bias, but... I feel like they just took like all the good students out of the uh, the classroom and then put them in <laughs> Doremi and Momoko's class, and all the others got put into Ampu, Hazuki, and Aiko's class because we don't see them, and we see very few of the new students in that class. But we do get a lot of the students in Doremi's new class, and you know, like, and, and not that they did interesting stuff with all the new character or with all the returning you know characters in that class, but you know. Um, and they did do some stuff with other characters, but like I was just a thing that I thought because I'm like, you know, all the students that I remember from the classroom as being like notable or interesting or good are in Doremi's class, <laughs> so it's like hmm, and you know, and I just think like you know keeping that you know aspect of, of the cast and the story, but also like introducing new characters, just like and all the new characters were like really good, and what they did with the old like. One of the good things this season was Momoko. <laughs> yeah. Um, who is like, okay, they're gonna they're gonna introduce a new character and, and they're gonna put him with the characters we've known for, you know, two years worth of television, and they're just gonna make us accept her, and they did. <laughs> She's really good. Yeah, it was like the first I think even in like that first episode, it's like, oh man, this is gonna be a change. Uh that's gonna be an interesting adjustment. And then by, like, a couple episodes later, it's like, what do you mean she only w- just got here? <laughs> right, where it's like, where Ompu kind of had this very gradual, like, introduction to the main cast. And then the, se- the second season, it didn't make me go like, huh, where she's just, like, she's just part of the group. And they just don't even question it anymore. Like, she, you know, um, because she is always, like, off doing work and stuff. But like, but then this is, like, Momoko, they introduce her, and it's like, yeah, she's already one of the, the old Jumajos, right? Like, it's not even a, a question, at the, you know, even relatively early in the show. Uh, like her language barrier, like that was a cute little thing that changed throughout the show where like she just gradually speaks more and more Japanese to the point by the end, like it, uh, she doesn't even struggle with it anymore. Um, mm-hmm. There was even one scene I remember where she said a word, I forget the word, but I think uh, Aiko was like, who taught you that word? Like she's, <laughs> she's able to use language that the others aren't even um, like know, know her to be familiar with, right? This like little details like that are good and fun and um you know and then they use even user has an outsider with like hana in particular like she just watches hana for a bit in um when she comes back and it's almost good and it's cute and i like her um hmm, what else do i have to say about momo unless you want to pick it up and run with it 
Well, I mean, she's she's dumb. So uh, I mean, she's <laughs> good, good and dumb. That and, she, and, and she tries really hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> ah, man, there there was so much good Momo content. Uh, like immediately, I'm like, is she gonna is, is she gonna overtake Aiko as my favorite? <laughs> <laughs> like just very quickly uh which i guess like maybe it kind of had to work that way that like she would be maybe it's not that she is like a more out there character compared to the others but just compared to like the dynamic that they've built up to this point she feels more she feels more like caricature-ish i think just because like the other characters are kind of familiar with each other and then here's this newcomer who it's like you know, she has to like establish her thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I do think like having her, you know, raised in America does make her immediately like um, unique in a way that no other character, right? So like she has that kind of immediate appeal, but then, you know, we get to know more about her and see her, you know, interact with all the other characters. Like at the end, like at the end when, you know, she's in her sort of days and all the other characters are trying to snap her out of it and like we get flashes to her and experience, like the paired episodes where she's like with like Hazuki at the beach or the one I really liked was with Anpu where she kind of like, you know, yeah. sees Anpu at work and, uh, you know, just, just getting all these perspectives on all these other characters and, you know, it's it's nice and good. Though what I think was a really good move was uh, Momoko's little arc with Reika, because I, I think I'd said before, like, Reika's basically, like, for me, the you know, the standout and one of my favorite of the side characters. And then so they give her, like, interest, like, Mom they become friends and kind of, but, uh, and then, like, there's an episode where, like, Reika's being casually racist and they need to, like, correct that. And I'm just, I, like, <laughs> it's really good. Reika's really good. Um, and she's, like, because in the first season, she was more or less antagonistic, and she's still a bit abrasive, but overall, she is, like, their friend, and, mm -hmm. like, positive, and, you know, they help her become, you know, student council president, and um, she gets, gets a weird, like, comedy duo thing with Doremi, and, be show, Joe, be show, Joe, be show, and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I, I feel like at the moment, like, it's kind of hard for me to... Cause... Because, I mean, I told you before the stream, I have so many screen caps. Like, com compared to the other seasons, I have, like, double, if not, like, <laughs> triple the amount that I had before. Because there's just, ah, uh, there's just so much. But that makes it kind of hard to, like, pinpoint particular moments and be like, ooh. Because normally I could just, like, scroll through them and it wouldn't take that long. But it's like, uh. <laughs> yeah, and I but, yeah, that, that episode. Yes. And, um, uh, yeah, just, like, the stuff with, um. You know, because Momoko, I guess, like, she is a foreigner to the group as well as, like, a foreigner. Um, I mean, like, she was born in Japan, obviously, but, like, you know, raised in America. So she, uh, I don't know. So, like, she's the outsider in terms of, like, the friend zone group. Mm -hmm. What am I, what are the words I'm saying? But she's um, also an outsider more nationally, right? Yeah. Um, and I do think that there, the show definitely runs with a lot of, like, you know, she's dressing up in costumes and stuff and kind of doing more... Uh, I don't know. So like, uh, I'm trying. One of the things was when like they were at the like martial art, the kendo uh, dojo, uh, and she like comes out on a horse and has like the top <laughs> knot hat, uh, and she's just like really getting into it. Uh, yeah, she's funny. Um, though I guess one, I'm, I'm not gonna say it's a complaint, but it's just so, you know something I, I did think about where like by having all these new characters and new arcs, like. You know, I definitely feel like there's less of the main, the the previous main four than there has been in the previous seasons. Like, you know, there was like, a, like there was one hmm. Hazuki episode and it was also a Momoko episode, right? And like, she was already the character who I felt like, you know, has like the least going on, right? Even though, you know, but like, so then she gets like one episode this season. I'm just kind of like, okay, sure, I guess, right? Yeah, like, but I think like. <laughs> You know, Aiko still got. She got. I think. Oh, a fair I got. Amount Aiko of, like, got some Aiko good episodes. Onko, Onpu got a little bit. Um. But, yeah, I um, think really like Hazuki is the only one where I'm still like. Uh, I kind of, I kind of wish there was a little more for her, but I think yeah, like Hazuki in general is a little more. No, yeah. Seems to be more of like a subdued character, and like a lot of the, like, I'm trying to think what was the episode where there was like another character who was like, uh oh no, like as far as like relating to uh the classmate who couldn't come to school um she had a line like uh sometimes people like uh are like afraid to like speak up or like be confrontational and it's like mm -hmm. that makes sense coming from Hazuki because she's the one who struggles with uh 
good point with that sort of thing so like i think i think like with hazuki like i'll be curious to see how how her arc wraps up because i do think even if she hasn't gotten as much like direct focus she's i don't think she's particularly like lacking for characterization it's just more that's kind of what like i do think like she has the kind of personality i guess where she's not really like front and center so to like have mm-hmm, that that's true. development potentially take place more so in the background. Yeah, because like that's why be I said interesting. Didn't want, that's why I didn't want to say it was a complaint because it's like on one hand introducing all these new characters is good and especially important for like like no side classmate I think except for like maybe Reka got like three episodes worth in in mm. one season right and but the character who did is like really good. Um, but with yeah. the main characters, we are really well established with them already. So, I, like, yeah, they don't need more. Like, we already understand their characters. But, you know, it's like, and I'm not going to say, like, oh, because they're focusing on the side characters, they're taken away from the main characters. Like, that's not <laughs> how it works, right? Like, people do seem to, like, rate shows in, like, terms of this, like, uh, screen time economy where it's like, like love life love live gets that a lot where it's like oh this character didn't get get enough screen time or focus episodes that means they're bad and you know i'm friends with the what the what who 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 doesn't like that because like just because you know certain characters are like like on this more on the supports like keep in mind that love live is a show that has like 20 ha- you know 26 per episodes per you know group of characters at most and ha- yet has double the characters, like, compared to um, Ojimajo Doremi, right? Where you're talking, like, way shorter amounts of time, but then double the characters, right? Like, so, you know, but, you know, it's a different type of show as well. So, like, mm-hmm. to apply that, just apply that just thing, Doremi is like, I'm, I'm not trying to say that, basically. Or I'm not trying to say, like, oh, I, maybe Momoko needs less screen time, so how's it going to get more? It's like, well, maybe... Hazuki, like, if she got more screen time, it wouldn't add, still wouldn't add to her character, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like, I get that in Super Sentai seasons, where, like, uh, one season was Die Ranger, and the Yellow Ranger, he got episodes that were, like, that's the Yellow Ranger episode. But he did they didn't make him a better character, is the thing, right? <laughs> so it's like, so him getting more screen time didn't help. Like, he's just, not, wasn't that interesting a character in the first place? Uh, so it's just, like, this is just the thing, like, I, in these kind of shows that, uh, you know, I think about, and, uh, you know, but... uh you know, I would love to get more Hazuki, but you know that depends on how much more is there to get because she's already she is already good. You know, mm-hmm. and like you said, she is more subdued in the first place, so her being more stand out maybe wouldn't make her better necessarily. So I think like maybe I think the character that I most noticed as far as like not even in like a a bad way is in like their episodes weren't good, but in terms of like getting pushed into the background a little more. I definitely think pop kind of had that this season. Yeah. Because now we have, um, like the, if, if like Hana was the, the big, like mascot sort of selling point of sharp, then Mm. Momo was definitely that for Molto, but, uh, partway through Hana comes back. So, Mm -hmm. and you know, with like splitting the class, there's just like a lot that the show needs to do. And I do think that like, with Sharp, I kind of had some... I think I had made a point that, like, uh, with all the different, like, plot lines or episode structures it was trying to juggle, um, mm-hmm. there were some cases where I felt like it, it, like it was taking on too much, but I didn't really get that same feeling uh, with Molto. It Even though it's like, also taking on a lot, I would say. Yeah, but um... yeah, because it has, you know, the the exams it has uh and maybe that is episodes pr- focusing certain... on trying to get yeah. hana to eat vegetables it has um introducing all the new focusing, classmates yeah yeah the new classmates uh character focused episodes uh and anything and maybe, else i'm yeah. not thinking of and maybe that is because it put like one subplot in the last season was pop continuing to try and advance in her witch exam but uh there was like maybe one episode of that this season if if that and maybe only one or two episodes with pop getting like a lot of focus at all like uh i did like erica um because which shut up i was like that's just a clone of reka <laughs> and then she literally she's like there she's a relative and i'm like oh my god this is perfect <laughs> like to the point where like pop is just like describing her and they're like is her name tamaki and she, pop's like how did you know and it's like well you know we've, we've been through this shit before <laughs> just, uh so that was funny <laughs> but uh yeah, because I definitely, like, yeah, there was way less pop this season, which, I mean, it was already kind of, like, because in the first season, I was like, oh, she's the red, uh, you know, she's she's going to be mm-hmm. part, but then I'm, I kind of, like, even, like, looking at just the character listings on Mal, you know, and just seeing the, the promotional uh, poster art, you know, it's like, 
She's not yeah, really, like, it, not really it prominent. It works because she wasn't really... I mean, like, she's one of the more major supporting characters, but she was never really, like, a main Ojimajo. Like, no. Well, I mean... You kind could, of, like, maybe they, in the first season you could, you could that's, say that's, that. Yeah, cause, and because... In season two, she she still had the old witch outfit, yeah. and, but everyone else changed costumes, and then they changed costumes again. Like she's very much being like left behind in that way, right? Mm-hmm. And even more so that, and that's even more pronounced. So like, I, f- I guess it's a, like a natural like expectation given like the just looking at the, the general transition from season one to season three and how she no, has yeah, been definitely. having less and less relevance. Um, but like you know, she did get like some really good stuff last season, like the movie. Um, you know, but I guess like, yeah, that's the thing in this season. What did she, you know, she didn't get a lot of great stuff. She got like a couple of episodes and she's still good, but yeah. Um, yeah. So it's just like, it's just she something had that's... with, uh, cause obviously she had like a little bit with like her back and forth with, uh, Tamaki, <laughs> but there was also like the episode where, uh, she became the big sister to the other random kid. Uh, yes, that was, and a so good that, one. That, that was good. Where it tied to one of the other students in the class, and uh, or not, or I think it was one of the two classes. Um, but yeah, no, that was that was a good episode. You're right. Um, I did actually forget about that one. It was also really funny that like um, Majorica gets roped back into being the plush, uh, <laughs> and so there's just like that one shot I have of her where she's like, it's like the bed of flowers and the tree stump, and she's just laying there like dead. <laughs> um because everybody everybody's got to have the the toy and yeah yeah Pop we were talking like, about uh, that i feel like we were talking about that recently uh with like the mascot characters having to like be uh oh no wait sailor moon i think is what we were talking about because mm. um luna's an animal and but she's a cat so she can kind of exist and move freely she can't talk obviously where usually the fairies in like pre and stuff they obviously look very inhuman or in uh, not like uh, uh, yeah, Luna's human. No, what? Um, they look. <laughs> they don't look like natural things, right? So they can, they have to pretend to be like stuffed animals and stuff, right? Uh, so uh, Majorica is kind of, she's a she's a witch frog, but she doesn't really look like a regular frog, so she has to pretend. So yeah, it, it, she has to do that. <laughs> and uh, um, I, yeah, I didn't think about that because that was more of a thing previously, but uh, not so like just the one time this season. Um, and yeah, I guess that's another character who didn't get as much as Majorica. Um, like there was the episode where the fairies unionized. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but aside from that, like Majorica, you know, w- w- compared to the last season where Majorica had one of my like standout moments in episodes um, with her mom. Um, but uh, so yeah, no, so yeah, it's fine. It's just like I think it's it's just like a natural uh, consequence of having large casts of characters, right? Um, you know, like we, we're reading Gintama right now. Lots of characters. And uh, where's Hidoro? Where's Hidoro? Where's Hidoro? <laughs> but uh, yeah. So we it's, don't it's... talk about Gintama on the <laughs> Nono show. <laughs> <laughs> this is my safe space. <laughs> don't take that away from me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, um, see, it's like I, I don't want to just like jump into like the, my favorite thing this season. Uh, be, I, I want to like maybe save that for later. Um, I'm trying to think of what else to talk about though. Uh, well, okay. I think also oh, like on. what was kind of interesting, um, like in previous, like there are definitely a couple of side characters from the old class who still like had some episodes to get focus on, but it was definitely, um, less than before like i don't remember um mm-hmm. kimitaka really getting like an episode to himself although he did have that ooh, that mm, that one moment uh, in the when other took, episode motherfucker took her steak <laughs> the last fight she gave it to everyone she deserved a bite too and he took it <laughs> that little shit i, I messaged math was i'm like i need to tip, like, go take a ticket to japan so i can kill a child <laughs> like i'm gonna he's and i'm gonna end his life math was <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, he's a dumb kid. That's a little harsh, but he yeah. needs he needs some kind of rep- reprimand. Reprimand. Um, but you did and... have uh, like an episode focusing on uh, Hasuki's sort of relationship with um with uh uh what's his name? I don't remember. Uh, oh, Masaru. Yeah. Or Ma- y- Yada. I remember his last name because it's like Yada is a way yeah. to say like no, and like that's the joke with his name, right? Where he's like, no, I don't want it, Yada, right? <laughs> so I, I remember that name more than his uh, given name. 
but uh yeah, but no, yeah I, so I, like that that was a hazaki episode there, there were two uh, episodes that, yeah that, see that one was see I'm, I, that one was a little earlier right so I, I guess I, I sometimes forget the earlier episodes because it's mm. just been a little longer since we watched them but no that that was a good one um yeah it was it was also uh th- yeah because it was more leaning into that idea that like hazaki is kind of like bad at communicating and bad at being confrontational so like when when <laughs> yes. momo is like oh you you can let me have this and she's like uh oh, no right, it's just a right. misunderstanding and now there's uh, the language you... barrier and so <laughs> yeah right. and then it just gets it just gets worse because like you know she's unable to address the situation quick enough and then uh there's conflict with masaru uh and he's like oh do you not care about that that gift anymore and she's like no and ah uh, it uh it's good yeah, it's that also was, that just was... like visually, it looks really nice because like the the bit of them like uh, there's like the thing with the bridge when they're kids, and then it's like mm-hmm. back to like the sun the sun setting in the background, and they're like in the water looking for the the thingy. It's good. Yeah, that was a good episode. I forgot about. So thank you for reminding me. And there was also the episode focusing on uh, the writer girl uh, because she yes had or the a, manga a new or friend. Nobu and yeah the manga um. Yes, <laughs> that was a well, that was a good one because especially like um like I've just been thinking about this with Doremi and I just ha- I can't remember at least not recently uh, and probably you know I a show that just really captures like relatable childhood things really well like because uh, we've t- been talking about it since the beginning where like there are, there are ind- like unique as or different aspects of the show that we connect to individually right and so like it's just like really good at capturing uh you know aspects of being a child i think and re- which i think is a big part of its appeal uh mm-hmm. even to adults because like we all have had childhoods right and so like just the like the, the having like different levels of friend right um which was kind of the conflict with the episode where nobuko you know aiko is her best friend uh but then the new girl who is cute and um but feeling bad because you know she's like second and like that becomes part of the eh it was a good episode <laughs> but yeah it's also kind of cool uh in like character ni- dynamic senses that uh you know nobu is the writer so she is like the the artist um and so like they were able to kind of i'm trying to think was that also the episode where they there was like the whole like sentai uh battle robot thing uh because there was like the whole skit yes because they used the magical stage and they saw like momoko is drawn with like a comic book shading to her and onpu had like flowers and sparkles and bubbles like a shoujo uh art, which was cute funny <laughs> um like the way they changed the art so yes i believe that was that episode because like they use magical stage to give her like a kind of dream sequence and sort of like figure out things and help her out a little bit or to help her out a little bit yeah so that that was the thing that happened in that i remember now um but no you're thinking of the same we're thinking of the same episode I, another episode with the, one of the new students that i liked was there was the one um where they did the horror thing where they went to the uh temple to uh exchange scary stories and stuff but then there was the girl who was from the neighboring church and so like you have these two characters from like ah, different yeah uh, with, well like and uh, especially how the episode resolved where the dads were fighting but then the kids understood the different religions better than their parents and mm. were quoting the the tenets of that religion at their parents to like get them to calm the fuck down and stop being babies and there was just a ghost who she's just like chilling and it's like okay <laughs> sure i mean it's magic guardians is in this setting so it, it, i just yeah huh that's happening um, yeah like, i mean like maybe there's like i don't I'm trying to think of, uh, it reminds me kind of of, like, the, um, the one episode in, like, Avatar The Last Airbender, where there's, like, the, each, like, each, there's, like, a conflict resorting from, like, something that happened in the past, and it's, like, both sides have, like, a misunderstanding of what actually happened. The the Great Divide? Yeah. One so, of like, the I most, like, infamous and disliked episodes <laughs> of the original but, of the Avatar. But, but that does kind of uh, seem like, because, like, the ghost is like, oh, I didn't do anything. You know, the, these people are yeah. just, like, they were just, like, feuding with each other over, like, a misunderstanding. And so, um, so it's kind of like a better version in a, in a of better that way. episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because, right. Well, because in the, in the Avatar episode, he just, like, lied about it. And it was just, like, yeah, accepted. <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck? That's kind of, like, kind of, like makes a weird message but in this one it's like it was legitimately a misunderstanding and like i said i like the way it was resolved with how like because like i guess a recurring thing this season was the sort of like tolerance aspect right and like that episode had the religious tolerance right where like here are these two characters with different beliefs but they're still a bit like uh i mean i you know like they're practically engaged i guess um 
<laughs> but uh and then of course you had the racial stuff with you know beth who reka like we mentioned earlier where reka is just like she can't be your best friend because uh, and it's like uh Rika, you can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah, no, it was very, like, direct, but in a more, like, I guess, passive bias sort of way. Yeah, like, uh, she wasn't being, like, mm, you know, it was just, like, again, like, this unconscious bias that she had that, you know, she was, uh, you know, bringing out. And, of course, like, it was wrong, obviously, but, like, it wasn't, like, necessarily hateful, right? Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so it was, like, it was all well handled, I, I think, Um I guess as far as another, like, like, mm, what did you think about the episode with the twins? Where the, oh, with the toy yeah, planes. That, that episode was, um, it was, like, interesting in that the, you know, like, the premise of, like, two twins sort of, like, switching places uh it's been it's been done before it's it, mm-hmm. i don't know how much of a trope it is but i it's think it's a common like, one yeah because i've but uh so like it could have um, been that and just kind of like yeah okay this is what's happening but there was also like the little bit the you know the fact that one character was a boy and the other was a girl and so not only was there um the two twins trading places but there was also a bit of talk about like gender roles and how the um, or more the like girl whose name I don't remember. Specific. Oh, because um, yeah. it was Yo and uh, Yoko and Junji. Uh, oh, Junji, I have the names written right. down. So, uh, but yeah, how like, um, yeah, how like Yoko was, uh, like she was afraid to like reveal that she was a girl because, um, you know, the guy, the guy she was talking to about like the airplanes and stuff. It's like he had that line about like, oh, girls just don't get it. Uh, right, because well, both was... of their moms disagreed with their hobby, but like for different reasons. Because like uh, you know uh, the other guy's mom was just like it's a waste of time and money and blah blah blah. You know normal, but where in Yoko's case it like because she was a girl, like she should not be interested in things because she was a girl. Like and then yeah. even kind of even their interests, like because Junji's really good at like the like the more uh, you know literature Japanese language and literature mm-hmm. and stuff right like more arty interests where she's inter- good at math and science which are more like they're kind of are like even from the outset sort of uh you know flipped r- regarding like preconceived gender notions you know and so of course so the you know and then of course like yeah she you know she had her quote-unquote boy interests but like she was insecure about them and uh i don't know i thought it was an inter- interesting episode um yeah uh, yeah it was uh there was also that one part uh where like they were they were dressed as each other and um junji had to go to the bathroom and he's like oh i can't go into the i like i can't go into the the boys bathroom because i'm dressed as my sister but i can't go into the girls bathroom because like that doesn't seem like a good idea and i was like oh surprise trans representation (laughs) (laughs) that's obviously not what the show is going for but of course like i would read it from that perspective yeah yeah, well especially because like you're playing danganronpa and we had the conversation about chapter two and sort of since then like anytime jenna comes up i'm i just have a moment of like hmm maybe this is problematic and i don't understand it and i don't recognize it yet (laughs) because like that's that's now happened recently and where i didn't what didn't catch on certain things uh, that I, you know, because uh, obviously I'm not as familiar with certain things. So, like, when when the, the, between this episode and, like, one or two other things I was going through, I just, like, better talk with Mathos about it. For, you know, just be, is it okay for me to like this, Mathos? No, I'm kidding. Um, but uh, <laughs> it was just a concern because, like, yeah, I, I, I was fine with it. Um, so, okay, I guess it's mutual. Uh, I'm not problematic. Yay. Um, don't listen to the Weep Club. Um, I mean, sorry. like, I mean, I don't know if there's maybe some way that someone could... Like it was something that it was like such a small moment that it's like not something I really thought. Well, much no, I mean about I, I was thinking more about like, the episode because like because like, hey. yeah, like obviously you know she you know didn't you know she um you know she she didn't necessarily like she was disguising herself as a boy so that she could like freely engage in her interests right but yeah. like obviously that wasn't ideal right so like and that was you know where the episode resolved like where she was able to like talk about her interests as a girl because like you know that like it's it's really dumb to qualify like like mm-hmm. here we are yeah. on a magical girl like i'm a i'm a dude talking about magical girl girl anime for children like i'm like on the opposite like uh, you know like you know girls ch- children versus me adult male like i'm on like i'm i'm the inverse in both cases yet here i am talking about the same kind of like topic right uh mm-hmm. so like like because like i did because i did think about that with this episode and um i remembered back when uh early on in the show where doremi she was kind of like, she was kind of doing the same thing where she was interested in this like Sentai thing. 
and but she was kind of like downplaying it or high, like because the guys were interested. Yeah. Yeah. and then but then she did with her magic she did like they she put them in the costumes and so this episode kind of like took that and made a whole episode out of it with new with some of the new characters um so i was like hey i recognize this from the earlier season um so yeah it was it was neat to see well because like and i guess looking at my notes again there was also the episode with um one of the last exams with the one the one witch who was actually a witch frog and she was like talking about yeah. how she he, she doesn't like the japanese and it's like well that's just like yeah like mm, more racism wonderful but like you know yeah and she... it was also i guess interesting that um you know momo there was a specific part where momo like stands up to her and yeah you know, she gets abducted and um She's like, oh, man, those Japanese. And Momo's like, well, I'm Japanese. And she's like, what? But you're so straightforward. Like, you're so direct. <laughs> but then there's more, like, talking about, like, how, um, like, that was something she had to learn because, like, it, it even tied back to a previous episode. I, th- oh, which character was it with? I think it was Aiko in the, because, like, the, the subtitles I had, they they did, were, did a really neat thing where, like, when I, sometimes oh, when they flashed yeah, back they to Oh, yeah, they showed episode, what it was flashing yes. back to, which or, was yeah. really bizarre when it would flash back to, like, um... I think there was the one, like, with the character, like, she dressed up in, like, a dress the one time. And that was, like, back in, like, way early in the first season. I was like, no, no, oh. it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> and it's just like, oh. No, yeah, but, that, uh, like, yeah, okay, so your subtitles had that, too, where it was like, oh, this episode is from this season um, and around this time code sometimes even. And, uh, yeah, but uh, I think it was Ico. Because, like, I, you know, Momoko would be very straightforward where, like, yeah, um, but, uh, no, I, I was remembering the scene they flashed back to with Aiko explaining it to Momoko that she, she yeah. could better explain the same thing, same thing to the, uh, Majo Reed is what, uh, yeah, it was, uh, that's the name I have written down, so I hope that's correct. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, so just like, you know, that, you know, and it's an understandably recurring thing with, you know, considering Momo is, again, like, even if, even if she is Japanese, she's still, you know, of a different, like, you know, mm-hmm. she has that American perspective and such. So it was a uh, well hand like, it's just a really well written ch- children's show that, like, was able to handle these topics with a lot of, like, deafness, I think. Um, relatively yeah. speaking like uh you know because it, it made him like easily understandable and was able to like 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 especially like yeah with reika you know like it was able to like have her do something racist without her but like by not you know she's not like like it, it, but it was in a casual way that is like understandable as like something especially a child would do right yeah um, so like i don't know i just uh i'm satisfied with its handling one more comment before i like i think we're we're winding down on things to talk about so we have to get to like the elephant in the room well um, I'm, I'm also or maybe she's like not looking... in the room uh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. i am not sure what you're addressing <laughs> <laughs> she's in the room at the end anyway um but uh because i was just er, gone oh no i sorry i'm like i guess cutting you off because i'm looking back at other episodes and like there was the one episode which was like uh like a like it was a a bit of like a a sex education episode which i thought was interesting because it it, that was where the flashback with the girl who is insecure about her femininity um Mm -hmm. came up Mm -hmm. uh because like she's she's starting to like develop breasts and she's insecure about that so like she's wearing baggy clothes and stuff um and so I don't know. There's like a whole episode just like focusing on characters changing and stuff, which I guess is a uh, also a bit of a uh, a theme because like the changing classrooms and they're getting older. Next year they're going to be sixth graders and then they're going to have to graduate. Ooh, that's gonna <laughs> that's yeah, gonna well, be like, something. And I definitely because like yeah, this this show is you know the, like they're in fifth grade now, and mm-hmm. I definitely like there was a a, 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 tar- a a subset of the audience who was literally like growing alongside the characters as they were watching it, right? Yeah. Um, so it makes sense for the show to mature a little bit as it's de- like dealing as as the you know its audience was maturing. Um, so uh, like I guess I'm like, now more I'm thinking about it, I'm getting interested in that movie. Because it's like here, you know, they're fictional characters, but they're still meant to represent like a part of the mm. audience who, like, we can't really like totally understand because we, you know, we didn't grow up with Doremi. Like, I saw ads for it on Four Kids um, at most as a kid for the English dub, mind right, which only dubbed the first season, if uh, you know that, I assume, um, right? So like, uh, you know, so I don't know. I just like think, yeah, because yeah, that episode was another good one with. Uh, and tying into another character who, like, 
we already know, but it's like perfect for because she's already you know always been you know taller and more like developed, right? Um, yeah. Back in third grade, uh, so it makes sense that she'd be the one to focus that episode on. And uh, yeah, I think um, it's also just like from the perspective of a kids show. Like, of course, with my like American perspective, uh, you know, sex is generally just like a thing that uh, oh, it's for it's it's a mature subject. Uh, you know, right. like they they teach it a bit in schools, but I'm sure most people would argue that like sex education could be better and so mm-hmm. just like seeing it in a kid's show uh like just addressing it uh straight up i, I respect that mm-hmm. yeah and that's that's a pretty big cultural difference in general because it is funny how inversed it is where it's like in america yeah sexuality is an adult topic but in japan it's childish to have like a lot of sex that's like where, where you get all these like pervert characters in uh shown in stuff and stuff because it's like it's meant to connect with children because children are the only like they're they're allowed to be uh, perverted and shitty i guess because they're kids mm. like they're expected to grow out of it is the idea i guess um so it is kind of weird, weird how you get that in verse and i guess speaking of pervert characters um <laughs> i just think it's funny like okay one less soya g day uh, which i don't mind that much but it's kind of funny that last season he became a child kidnapper their punishment was to make him work in childcare. Yeah. And the first thing he does, the first fucking thing he does, Matthew, is, is kidnap, kidnap the same child. <laughs> Who could have seen that coming? <laughs> Put me on the phone with someone in fucking witch administration because I have some harsh words. Because what the <laughs> fuck? No, it is fine. I didn't even like, stop to think about that when that episode happened. But now that you bring it up, I'm like, oh yeah, that's... That's uh <laughs> that's some logic. Oh my god. Like and um cuz like after cuz there was a, there was the episode where he was just like like focused on Hana in the, you know, um childcare place and like Oya Jiri even had a good moment where he like plays the lullaby cuz he knows the lullaby that she likes. Yeah. So he plays it and he's like did did he just do something like thoughtful <laughs> for someone else without I self-interest know, right? in mind? Like uh, like so it's like oh, it's his best moment i guess so like the season did have that um <laughs> right so uh yeah that just stuck out to me as like hey he could do a good thing sometimes <laughs> so um yeah. oh yeah i guess we could talk about hana a bit because uh like I, I i did forget that the reason she hated vegetables was because of the witch curse so when mm. some some episodes when she was being out picky i was like you shit you little shit i love you <laughs> but also eat your fucking vegetables <laughs> Like I learned something about myself, and uh, I'll have to be if I ever have to raise a kid, I'll be careful because uh, I was like getting like I, the I, the fact that I was getting remotely frustrated at all is like irrational anger, like because like especially considering like I should have re- it wasn't until like one of the last episodes where it's like oh yeah she was cursed and not like vegetables and I'm like oh right yeah I, I remember that uh, I, I remember that the whole time haha <laughs> don't ignore my prior anger. <laughs> um, well, like, I think like there's also a bit of um. Obviously, like, my only real other point of comparison is Hugto in this case, as far as, mm-hmm. like, seeing, um, as far as, like, anime goes, like, having a, you know, a, a series where the point is that, like, they're raising a baby. But, like, we've had more time with Hana, so there's, like, you know, between the two seasons, there's a lot more to see, like, the negative, I guess, sort of aspects of, like, raising a child that, like, mm-hmm. yes, it can be frustrating, and it can be, um, you know, so I guess it's kind of interesting seeing the characters kind of tackle that. Um, mm-hmm. Because, like, you know, like, this series, of course, is still uh, expanding on what, what Sharp set up with the with the idea of motherhood and, um, in the, again, like, mm-hmm. growing and, uh, that, like, that's not... A, that hasn't exactly been, like, left behind or lost. Right. Oh, my God, I'm so stupid. I'm looking at my screen caps, and I'm like, Kiyotaka didn't get an episode this season. And one of my screen caps here is the, the soccer episode where... He was the focal character because uh, the one guy came back and <laughs> he was benched and he was uh, upset about that. And he right. had to talk to the other character. <sighs> he never got an episode. <laughs> well, they're like, uh, there's only 50. Just remember every single one off the top of your head. Do it right now. Like episode one. No, um, just like pop quiz. Let's go. <laughs> but uh, no, it's fine. Yeah. And well, like. Cause yeah, you did, yeah, you got more Hana and you got like the food and stuff. Um, 
where, you know, of course, like, the whole thing with cooking, so, like, you know, having to feed Hana, like, and find creative ways to get her to eat vegetables was, mm-hmm. you know, uh, neat. And, like, it wasn't always just felt like trying to find ways to hide it, because sometimes she'd be like, no, I don't want to eat that. And I'm like, you little shit. Eat, eat your fucking vegetable. <laughs> but then, like, there, like one episode, I guess the most recent, the last one, was when she goes on a fucking big adventure around the city. And I'm just yeah. like, you're a toddler. Uh, why? Someone someone do something. Help she amasses her. an army of dogs. <laughs> she saves the little cat from the, the river. Yes, she's a good baby. <laughs> and that was, that was, like, that was an interesting episode just because it's like, uh, she's just, like, like, she's playing with the kids and she's animating the toys with magic. And, like, the parents are just like, oh, they look, I'm glad they're having fun. And, of course, like, <laughs> Hannah's just, she's, she's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> she's, like, uh, like, one misstep away from being turned into a frog. <laughs> ah, I'm gonna be really interested to see like what what dokan does with her because i've seen the promotional art so i knew what was coming even before the teaser well and like if you you look on mal and see the characters and oh hana huh that's an interesting (laughs) picture they chose for (laughs) hana (laughs) Hmm. yeah so like we we have had like the i I think it makes sense though because like we've already had two full years of like raising her and she's getting to the point where like she's talking now not just right like, like broken she, she, words in and like sounds, one of the last like, episodes she gave actually... like a full fucking sentence pretty like still with slurs and stuff but like you know little you know uh, like there were misspeaks and stuff but it was mm-hmm. like i said slurs and i realized that's a different that's a, that's the <laughs> word honest honey you're not allowed to say fuck um just, i don't know don't say any bad words um none of them can say bad words um but it's just like yeah no yeah she she was speak. yeah she she's all she and momo both learned how to speak better across the season just at like different degrees of course yeah. um but yeah so so yeah i guess that does make sense as like a logic and it's magic like they could just do whatever the fuck they want right um mm-hmm. you know within the established rules so uh, yeah, no, it's uh, I'm I am also curious to see how that like works into because it's also the you know it's, chrono- it's chronologically it is the last uh, of Doremi so hmm interesting um, but uh, I don't yeah, know, I'm I looking forward like, to it either as way as far as like what what the stuff that her character was able to do this season um you know like we we see some little uh, some little indications that like uh, the importance of like raising a child well I guess because like when she's at the daycare center and nobody can really keep her in check, she's like bullying all the other kids occasionally with like, because nobody has the same kind of magic, uh, the same level of magic power that she does. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, yeah, it's definitely, you know, she's not just like an idealized, uh, an idealized baby where like, Oh, she's so cute and nothing ever wrong happens with her. Uh, no, she could, she could be a little shit sometimes. And it's, uh, (laughs) I mean, I think I even called her last season, like, she's an adorable agent of chaos, where she just, like, <laughs> you know, Hana can just, has this capability to, like, instantly make trouble. Um, yeah. So, uh, like, you know, but she'll yeah, just it... fly away, and it's like, well, shit, what do we do about that? But, but yeah, it's <laughs> interesting, because, like, she, I guess she has a bit of, like, a flexible role in that sense, because, like, there's mm-hmm. also the episode where the other two, uh, what are their names? D- Dekipaki... Did I just mix names? I don't know. Somebody and the other one. Um, the for the examiners or the former? No, no uh, the examiner. The, the, like the the former examiners. Yeah, in the kids. in the first season, right? Yeah. Um, wasn't uh, it Malta like, and Malta Malta or something like that? Or as the parents and their kids, be. right? I, I, so I don't know. What they had weird witch names, whatever. It's, names. it's not important. I know who you're talking about. There's the shorter but, but one yeah, and there's, there's the there's, heavier there's, one. So there's like the yeah. episode where well, there's one episode where. Um, or maybe it's even the same episode. I honestly don't remember. But like, they're the ones who are being antagonistic, and like the class rallies behind Hana, and she's the one like protecting them. But then there's also times where she is the one doing the antagonizing. There's <laughs> even my favorite part uh, is when she does Doremi's boop boop boop, boop. <laughs> and it's like, oh no, Doremi, you're a bad influence. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah, they even did it, right, uh, where it's like, it was transferring from Hana to the other kid, and it's like, hey, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it's becoming infectious, everyone's gonna do it. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the, um, I don't think how much, I don't think I have much to say as far as, like, individual episodes or characters, except 
the one. So I guess we should finally... Mm. Uh... Well, there's definitely more than just the one. Okay, that's true. Um, I mean, the one I've been waiting on, I've been holding off on. I you're mean. thinking of the char- the side character. Yeah, I know. Uh, so I'm going to cut you off okay, that's and fine. talk about my favorite episode, which was the oh. episode focusing on Doremi herself. Um, the episode where they throw her a surprise birthday party. That was a good one. But that the whole really time... Good. It's a su- it's a surprise, so she can't know. And it's right after she does, uh, well, not not even like anything particularly out of the ordinary for her, because like she messes up all the time. But um, that particular day is like, oh, she mess she messed up really big, and like things kept happening, and it felt like normally she's good at bouncing back, because like she she slips up or does something, but it's like, oh, she's Dory me, she'll bounce back, um, and she's got her friends there to support her and whatever. Uh, but in this episode, she uh, her friends are hiding something from her, and so <laughs> her like mistakes just kind of pile up. Um, and she keeps and... trying harder to make up for the mistakes, which makes yeah. more mistakes. Like, yeah. Well, and the part that got me early on is like, is you know, she, someone was mad at her, and she taught. Oh, is it because I drank the milk in the fridge? And they were like, "That was you." Mm. Like they were mad about something else. Like I love that trope when it happens when like a kid like. Because it's just so uh, actual to, like, my experiences, especially with my (laughs) little brother, of just, like, a kid being guilty about something they did and revealing it to a parent who legitimately did not, or or someone else who just legitimately did not know that they did, that they, and so they're like, (laughs) this is so funny. Mm, Yeah, Uh, because then it's also like the characters just get more angry, Uh, but it's like, (laughs) it's a misunderstanding kind of anger. Yeah. well, sometimes another instance of that was when they like snuck into the witch world and like uh, they like the one of the witch world messengers was there for unrelated reasons. And they're just like, oh, shit, did you know we we're going to stick it sneak into the witch world? And they're like, what? And it's like, I don't think they were angry, but it's the same kind of idea where they just like <laughs> confess to what they were like. <laughs> but anyway, keep going on the episode. Uh, uh, yeah, because then she has the whole time where she's like. And it's it's definitely also like a trope I've seen in other things where a character is on their own and they're like, okay, I'm gonna pig out and I'm just gonna enjoy myself. <laughs> I'm gonna think only about me um, because like she can't get in touch with anybody and she's like, and her family's gone because obviously everybody's getting ready for the party. Um, but she's like, okay, I'll just do me. Uh, and then uh, she feels sick after that <laughs> because uh, of she, course she, she goes she goes a little too overboard. Um, and really just like the whole thing of the episode where like this idea that um you know this fear that like uh your friends will like move on from you one day and that um i don't know it it was definitely an episode that like resonated strongly with me personally you know because like she was Mm -hmm. all by herself and it wasn't that anybody was like actually upset at her or that um, anybody hated her. It was just like they were they were planning a surprise for her, and she 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 wouldn't know. Yes, um, but it did really hit a you, lot at, at like those insecurities that like you know people people grow apart and stuff, and sometimes it's just like you mess up, and it's like oh no, is is this it? Is this the end? Uh, and just like it's also like a really well directed episode, like the shot of her sitting on like the the rock formations and uh, the sun in the background is very good. But then also. Um, like she's feeling down in the dumps and feeling bad about herself, but then she sees the girl with the kids, uh, who like fell over and she's crying and she's sad. And Doremi, she's got the smile on her face and she's <laughs> like, you know, don't cry. Uh, you know, you you got to go have fun with your friends. And they run off, and then she slips and falls, and it's. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Tori is so good yes uh, like she's still my favorite character and that was like a really stand up episode of the season yeah um, so and of course yeah like the party happens and she like you know everyone's there and uh, she, it, like oh they don't hate me and it's like yeah, yeah. and there's and also the she... shot of like even in the window because uh, they can't reveal themselves but like Majorica throwing up like the peace sign and the, <laughs> the fairies and it's everybody's there for her because like that that's the thing, and like that moment with with the little kid, uh, says like it's just such a good encapsulation of Doremi's character because like no matter how much the world will like beat down on her or you know no matter what kind of failings she has, she's always 
you know, willing to extend that helping hand and like lift other people up. And right. Which is why her friends won't abandon her. And like, yeah. she, cause like they, they invited like every family, fr- school classmates, you know, her close circle of friends, like everybody was there. And of course, like you said, Majorica and the fairies were in the background kind of, cause they couldn't obviously like be there, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah. It, yeah. Because <laughs> like the reality of the situation wasn't that people dislike Dore me for her clumsiness, but they like appreciate like everybody was there for her. So you know, like her, her fear that like people were gonna like leave her and that you know nobody right, like the cared opposite about turned her out to be true. And it, it was, was the uh, exact yes. opposite, and you it know was, yeah. she meant so much to everybody in the community, and it was ah, uh, it was good. <laughs> I, cr- I I cried. It was a very good episode. <laughs> uh, I th- I think I cr- I probably teared up, but uh, uh, we we didn't talk about the movie. No, we did not. Oh, and we did. We did also talk about. The part um, we did bring up Ico, I think, but we didn't go a lot. Oh, into I'm also her, just talking, re- re- uh, re-referencing oh, the gag at the end of the episode where oh. she shares the steak <laughs> with everybody because she's so good, uh, and then Kim- Kimitaka hits her with the soccer ball and just takes the steak, and everybody's like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the movie was well, especially because we watched the movie at the at the perfect time. Uh, because first we got at, like we watched episode twenty six, where I- Iko's like, "Oh my god, my parents are getting back together," um, and like then we find out so, like it was there was even a line about like how I you know her mom was hospital Iko's mom was or her mom was hospitalized. Yeah, and, while she like, was she, pregnant with Iko and she couldn't she uh... couldn't go to see her and like but it doesn't go any more into that. And then mm-hmm. we watched the movie, and it turns out what happened was that, like, I, you know, um, because of Aiko, basically, be, or in you know, pregnant with her mo- pregnant mom, pre- like she couldn't go see her mom when she passed away, mm-hmm. and that sort of like severed her from her own family, right? Because yeah. of her relationship with a guy who they were already not supportive of, I'm pretty sure. Um, so like I, so which had gave her, like she she had remembered her uh, her grandpa, um, being angry, and that like you know that sort of like memory sort of resurfaced when she saw uh doremi's grandpa um you know even though like obviously he was a different person with his you know he had issues with his son um and but he wasn't like angry at Ico, obviously but she still remembered that and that still like kind of came up and so like we because <laughs> then like uh, huh okay couldn't go to hospital for some, all right and then it's like oh she couldn't see her. She couldn't be with her mom when she passed away. Oh, mm-hmm. and it's just like added like a perfect con- like if we'd watched it er- earlier, it wouldn't have worked. And if we watched it later, it would have been fine. But it was st- it was it was pretty perfectly placed. Um, I think but, it uh, might have like ac- like as far as like when it aired, uh, it might have come out before that episode. But still, it worked out that we watched it the way that we did because uh, like they tie into each other very well. Mm-hmm. And also, just talking about the movie. Like, the visual direction oh, and, like, the color really design and everything. It's... I I have to assume that Moto was the series where they made the switch to digital. Because, like, this movie just looks so different compared to the Sharp movie. Um, mm-hmm. Because, like, with Sharp... Uh, not that it wasn't, like, well animated or anything, but there was definitely... It it's very like zoomed in and like you can really tell when like you play the op of like a normal episode and if you play like the opening that plays in sharp and it's mm-hmm. very like everything feels very close to the frame which mm-hmm. I don't know is necessarily like because it was cell animated like I don't I have I have not checked to verify what is and isn't cell or digital animated uh, but because I know that this series aired during the time when that would have um, the transition would have been happening generally speaking in you know and a reduction. Um, but in in this movie, you can really tell because like there's just a lot of like CG moving backgrounds, and not yeah, even the, like the in a bad is, way. Was, uh, especially the trees, one that stuck the out clouds to me, yeah. when they're in the, and you have like the lightning strike, and just the way that like the characters are kind of shaded when the lightning strikes. Um, there's just like a lot of movement. Like the mm-hmm. background is very um, animated as well as the characters, and it's I don't know. I I just thought it was really interesting, um, and that's not even to speak of the impeccable color design, uh, the, the character expressions. Um, <laughs> it, there's, um, there's yeah. like a really good one of Hazuki where like they, there's like, they're by like that pond and it's in like the foggy forest and like the frog lands on her. And it's just a super close up on her face. <laughs> uh, and she's just got this look of like, ah. <laughs> well, I also really like when, um, when they're, they find the, the frog stone and, um, 
grandma or grandpa comes in yeah. and everyone is fucking horrified and just like the the animation when they like run away is fu- it, it's it's funnier because of the yeah. animation like i like i think at least one, one of them like falls over at one point and it's just like <laughs> i ha- i have so some screen caps funny. here of like aiko is just dragging hazuki and hazuki is just like <laughs> flailing around <laughs> and it's it's also just like it moves very quick too cuz like even when they run past him there's like close ups on the characters faces and like uh Hazuki's got like the tears running down her face and Ompu is just like a rare moment where she's just like <laughs> fear. <laughs> it was and then really, like yeah. And then just like the the scene of like Doremi staring down the 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 mystery man who turns out to be uh, the grandfather and it's like all bathed in these like reds. Um mm-hmm. like it's just a it's a very pretty movie. Yes, it was uh it was a good time. Um, and even in like the flashback scenes where like the environments are all green, but the characters are bathed in red. It's, it, it's just very visually striking and, uh, that I'm easily won over by, by good colors. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, it, no, I looked at re- the movie looked really good and like, uh, like it was only half hour long and I think it was really like good and, you know, even dense for what it was, but there was a part of me that was like, but what if it was longer? <laughs> Like mm. it, it, there could be more good animation and more like you, you know time to let the story breathe is because it was also it was fa- it was fairly fast and I don't think that was a detriment to the movie but like it definitely made me think like like what if there was more what give me more movie toy toy yeah give me more movie please See, it, that's it looks where, good like, I don't know <laughs> is this like a made for TV movie or I mean like it's widescreen so mm-hmm. like was well, it something that maybe like was it one of those things that like Toei promoted all together and so like it would air before something or air alongside a bunch of other little short movies um well one thing i've heard like w- one of the Yu Hakusho movies is like half an hour long right yes yeah so what i heard about yeah, those yeah there there is are a that, couple of shonen um, series uh, cuz like Dr. Slump had one of those too but that's right. gone way back cuz like what i've heard is like some of those or old Super Sentai movies were also like sometimes half an hour long, which is also Toei, even though it's not their animation team, obviously. But mm-hmm. like, as I understand it, like they're called movies, but nowadays they would probably like Jump Festa specials, like an example mm-hmm. of like a like it's not a one piece movie, but it probably would have been considered one if it came out like 10, 20 years earlier was the um the one piece pirate Gonzok special, which was handled by a different animation studio than Toei. Mm. Um, but it was like it's a half hour long special that uh with of one it was the first animated one piece thing basically um so it, 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 it it's a kind of thing and um there've been other specials of course and like other half an hour long but like nowadays they're just considered specials and not movies so maybe this was what that was but it's also like yeah. the production is really good so um i don't know if that's like uh, you know unique to movies but uh like i don't i don't know like would this have been a thing that you go into theater to see like an actual cinema film right like mm-hmm. uh, an actual film film is what i just said i don't know why i said that <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah so i don't know exactly but uh i don't know it was good and that's all that matters but i do you know if, if, uh, an actual like theatrical length doremi movie would be really cool and i don't know yeah. is, there, is there a movie for Do, uh dokan or no. I I don't know because I I, I see like when no, I, had I looked up the when I had looked up Moto uh like I knew that there was a movie but like in my batch uh there wasn't it wasn't like yes yeah, so, so you had to download from so the I torrent. was like oh yeah, no like... <laughs> we're not gonna be able to see this movie but then yeah that, I showed you because it was in my torrent that I use that has like everything but I don't yeah I'm looking at um just my list of stuff and I only have like uh Dokkan Naisho and the searching for the witch apprentices movie that is the uh the recent one so i don't think mm. there's another movie for dokkan which is sad, sad because it, yeah it is just like like nice little bit of just great animation and sometimes even character and like no usually character yeah both the movies had like this good character stuff so um though i do think i preferred like the dormy and pop character stuff from the last mm-hmm. movie but i still like yeah. both movies and they were both really good <laughs> um yeah so. i didn't feel like as um as like moment to moment compelled i guess like by this one i mean like it it was still really good uh but it wasn't like with dory me sharp where i was like i would show this to someone who hasn't seen dory me just to like if they weren't sold and they needed something to like really uh because it like kind of it captured like the i mean like this movie does that too like it has good character moments and Mm -hmm. good jokes and good animation (laughs) but i don't know something about the other one just like clicked with me more Mm -hmm. makes sense but I say that after having said all those positive things, so, um, <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I think colors, I, I think I've... oh, great animation, visuals, uh, <laughs> oh, the switch to from cell to digital, uh, 
five out of ten, it's okay. <laughs> like, but no, that's not. I know you gave it a higher score. I just thought that was funny the way you uh, framed that. Um, but uh, so my favorite thing from the season was Kyle. We'll be right back after this commercial break. No, <laughs> no, go ahead. Oh my god, that was <laughs> like, yeah. uh, like. Oh, okay, how she do was I describe a, like how she this was hurt a me? new character introduced in this season, and she got three separate episodes, which I really liked that they didn't yes. just put all of her arc in one episode because like oh, it wouldn't no, have worked it, that way. No, it would not have worked at all. Like it would have not like rather than being like some of my favorite stuff from the season, it would have just been like average to fine. I think because mm-hmm. a part of what I really liked about it is that they gave her time, right? Yeah. Because like you know she like. You know, I almost described her as like she's if if she, if if this show took place in high school, she'd be like a Hickey character, right? Yeah, of that kind of like actual like because I've seen in the general like anti tube community a lot of like occasional dismissiveness towards Hickey and like you know I've never known anyone or been in that situation myself, but like mm-hmm. it's I've seen like oh, like with the same energy as like stop being depressed, bro. Um, just yeah. get, stop being sad with that same energy. Just like go outside, dude, just kick him out. And it's like, I don't like that because no. again, I've never been in that situation. I don't know anyone has been in that situation, but I don't think that like just that, that forced roughness is healthy or positive or good. No, so, it de- it's yeah. definitely like tied into the way people uh, treat mental health and yeah. um, that sort of thing where it's like, Oh, it's not because you know, this, I mean, like, maybe that's not the case for some people who are hold that more harsher stance. Maybe it's, you know, that that's their way of seeing. I don't know. But like, you know, I've definitely seen it. The like uh, it's it's oh, it's not like like it's like laziness or whatever. Like, what, what's the easiest way that you can like frame uh, it to make them it, yeah. look like a bad person? Right. But it's like, it's but in not most that cases, simple. it's like personal trauma or like just unprocessed. Uh, like there's there's a reason that people end up like that right and uh so like the fact that they gave kayako like yeah, three episodes over the course of like when was the first one like episode 20 something episode in the teens or something yeah like that. yeah but, it wasn't just like three episodes back to back they definitely right it was like it, it was out. like half over half a year of airtime basically at, at um you know right for this yeah. three episode arc and that was just like really <sighs> Like the one that like the last one got me, but I think the second one maybe fucked me up a little bit more. <laughs> mm. Like as far as like crying, um, and maybe that also like, well, because like she talked about like part of like why part of why she didn't go to school like because she um you know she uh, like thought everyone assumed the worst of her right? or like mm-hmm. or she you know and because she you know she. Like, and then, um, and in the last episode, we even got, like, the interviews of the other people who, like, to them, it was, like, nothing. Like, oh, yeah, once she bumped into me and apologized a lot. And, like, that was just, like, a thing that happened that stuck out to him. But for Kayoko, it, like, that was the kind of thing that hurt, that, you know, made her struggle for so long. Yeah. Um, but, um. (sighs) But I also like that it wasn't any one particular thing. It was, like, a multitude of, um, you know, like, circumstances at home, circumstances at school, uh, just like her general sort of, you know, like what shaped her personality wasn't just like, oh, I had a I had a bad experience at school and that was it. Like it felt like there was more. Not that there's anything wrong with the, a character who has like one real like inciting incident that um, mm-hmm. that they have to work through, but like there were there were multiple factors into this, and that right, made and it be- more it, like the fact that they also took their time unpacking that. I I, I like that. Yes, like. <sighs> Like, even just the first episode, like, they tried to go to school, but she, she almost threw up again, and she, she didn't even make it to school, but, like, the fact that she even tried again, and then mm-hmm. Doremi, like, even though, because, like, it's like, they tied it back to Doremi, where it's like, well, Doremi always fails, and she always, you know, struggles, and makes the people around her mad, like, she kind of, she just, like, especially in that episode that you mentioned, your favorite episode, like, she just kind of lives Kayoko's fears, right? Mm-hmm. But she's used to it because she has like grown and become stronger, and like where Kayoko needs that time. Like Dor- this is our third season with Doremi. Of course, she's already like that, right? Where Kayoko hasn't had a group of friends around her for nearly that long. So and like so, the fact that yeah, the first episode ends where she, you know, she's the fact that she went out at at all to try and go to school again was like making progress, and like she um, and then the second episode where you know she gets the desk in the um 
in yeah, the nurse's that, room. That one in particular was, um, I, I liked that because like, it's, I could, my obvious connection to it was like wandering sun because like in that series, um, basically like the character, uh, they come, they, they cross dress, like coming to school. Like mm-hmm. that's their big mm. character moment where they're like, um, you know, going to be true to, to who they are. Um, and then like, they get a bunch of backlash for it, like from the school and from the, the classmates. And so they end up, you know, they have a desk in the nurse's office because like, that is where, um, you know, I guess as far as like, uh, how, well, it's the way that I want to phrase this. Um, just as far as like mental, you know, I guess like mental health also kind of being associated with this sort of like, you know, you go to the nurse's office if you're physically sick. Um, mm-hmm. but also like that, in a way, like by recognizing that the importance of mental health and saying you can go to the nurse's office when you're not just physically sick. Yeah, right? like, I think I think that there is probably like a degree to which, um, you know, there is like a medicalization of mental issues in a way, but that's um, not necessarily like th- there's more that like another series could probably unpack with that association. But I think like culturally, like there's something bigger than like what the series is getting at that I'm like thinking of here. Um, mm-hmm. But, but yeah, like I, I like what this basically like that's, that's the connection I made in my head. And that made like the moment um, that like they're able to come to school, but like it's, it's a, it's a step on the journey. It wasn't like, <sighs> right. Um, right. Where they like, they're, she's not interacting with her classmates or going into the, you know, the classroom with all those people who she like on some level like fears, right. Because she's just thinking the worst and assuming you know, because of, you know, but like the fact that she's still able to like have a space to go into school and be there at school. Well, because like that's the whole thing with like um, where the um, Reno was kind of like he hey, had a line about like, um, oh, why don't you just come to school or something like that? But yeah. like, but and that hurt Kyle because like the fact like it, it's it's kind of the thing that compounds, right? Where like the longer she, she's at, like there was even the her um her previous teacher that we see in the last episode even said like the longer you stay out of school, like the, the worse it's going to be on your future. Right. Mm -hmm. And that kind of pressure is like, like she already can't go to school. So when she considers like, Oh, like it's going to be harder at school because I miss so much. Like that makes it even harder for her to go to school. Right. Yeah. Like, so you have this compounding issue that like, just get like, Oh, just get over it. Like, no, she needs help to take even the small steps because Mm -hmm. like, it's it's just the type of thing that just gets worse over time and make even making that first step and like is difficult on its own let alone making more steps right so that's why like again having three episodes just made it really work um yeah and i like how they did break it up in the episodic format so that like there were little payoffs so there was a sense of um Right, like that there was sort a of sense gradual of progress. Pro- yes. Yeah, yeah, because like making that progress gradually um, helps that it's like, you know, because it is a problem that like has to be kind of addressed in multiple steps. And so like, you know, the first episode, it was mainly like they, they tried to get her to school, but that didn't really work. But still, like Dory Me was able to like befriend her and establish that connection. And then right. like in the second episode, they were able to get her to the nurse's office. Uh, and... Uh, you know, and just, like, establishing those connections further. So she had, like... See, what I really liked in the third episode was um, when we we got to see that teacher again in, like, mm-hmm. the, the other sort of, like, makeshift school uh, where it yes. was, like, volunteer work. And it was, like, you know, these kids who can't kind of... You know, they have, like, their own issues and they can't go to school under, like, normal circumstances. Basically, people like Kayako. Was that her name? Did I get yes. that right? Yeah. Um, and I, I liked I liked how that was dealt with because, um, like from my my perspective watching it, I'm like, well that that wouldn't be that wouldn't be a solution to her problem because then at that point they're like taking away her support network. They're taking away the characters, you know, Dory, me and the gang who have been there and have been like working with her and helping her. Um, right. You know, they like show this as like, yeah. They show this as a valid solution, but it's just not the one for Kyoko, right? Because, yeah. Yeah. And, well, also just a random. Did you ever watch Songo to No Lion season two? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because there was a the mention that there was the, the bullying there, and the one character who goes to a kind of place that reminded me of 
the school me- the, the mentioned in that, that episode of Doremi. Uh, so mm. just uh, just connecting, um, you know, this to um, one of my favorite things. Um, yeah, but, I hadn't thought about that, but that is another another connection. But um, like I guess because I also had a well, I had a, a, a not personal as in thing to happen to me, but um, it was weird timing. Uh, so regarding like things happening in my real life that end up tying into Dory me, like I talked about last time. Um, so this one didn't, again, didn't directly happen to me, but in January, my friend, um, my best friend, actually, he, um, and he's fine. He's told me he's uh, fine with me talking about some stuff like this, but, uh, he had to go to him. He, he checked himself into a mental hospital. Um, and what mm. he described to me after the fact was his sort of, um, he has paranoid thoughts like one example he gave me is like he'll hear like muffled voices in another room and he knows his hearing isn't that good. He knows mm-hmm. like he shouldn't be able to hear them, but he would hear like them saying like threatening things like they're planning to kill him or something like that. Right. Like mm. or or hurt him or family members like he'll just he'll come, have these kind of paranoid thoughts. And uh, due to events like they it gotten really bad. So he, he had himself checked in the mental hospital. So like seeing like a, a less extreme version of that in Doremi with Kyoko, like mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that was a big part of why, uh, especially the second and third episodes, really hit me <laughs> because, like, uh, you know, I, I just made it just made me think of a friend of mine and uh, dealing with something else, I suppose. And but then, like, you know, Kyoko, yeah, she did have that gradual change, and then the last episode where like she's about to throw up again, and because like that's the that's the part that like the climax of the third episode is so yeah. fucking good because yeah. like everything like she's squared away with her parents she's squared away with her classmates she's squared away away with um you know her friends her te- her old teacher like every it, it all seems like everything's good and she's uh-huh. going back to class for the first time and she has another fucking attack mm-hmm. like because it just doesn't go away that easily like it doesn't matter like even though or not that it doesn't matter but like you know getting talking to everyone like that and being able to open up like helped her but like trauma just doesn't go away that easily. Mm-hmm. But you know, even though she was throw- gonna throw up, Dora me. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Joke, it's okay if you throw up. Just, just you know, like there. And then the whole class comes out, and I'm like, ah! yeah, yeah. When the when the whole ca- when the whole class came out was like cheering her on. I was the the waterworks. I was like, no. <laughs> it, it was, uh, it was really good. Uh, God, oh my God, it was so fucking good. Uh those two episodes were so, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Yeah, that, that was my favorite part of the season for sure. Um, like the, the Dormy episode was good and it was definitely up there, like top five, but like the Kyoko stuff just really stood out to me. Um, no, so. yeah, it, it, it was, a, it was a standout. Uh, and it, it, it also factors into, you know, the other episodes we've been talking about that, like, I mean, and Dory Me, not just this even this season specifically, even has you know Dory Me is not afraid to like stray away from those more serious subject matters. Um, and I think it's just you know it's really like setting in. I guess now that we're getting closer to the end, that uh, you know just like the general structure of this series is really is really good. Like having this this group of characters who um, you know they're like there for their community, and it's like a group of people that like you can talk to if like something's going on if you need help with something in any shape or form and they're just like there uh and it's like i don't know it's 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 a good feeling it's uh, yeah it's Mm -hmm. it's yeah it's just like like i'm I'm glad like i don't know if it if it or when it will ever be like a favorite anime of mine like maybe something will happen and i'll just be like maybe this is a 10 out of 10 like right now i'm still feeling that like eight range but like it's a show i'm really glad exists Mm-hmm. Um, like I, it, it, I do love it. It's just really good. It was really nice to come back to, and I'll be glad to return to it when we do again. Because uh, maybe you know, maybe no one noticed, but uh, we were. I think at, at the end of the, la- at the in the last note of the episode, I think I said we were gonna watch Futaro Precure, and that would be our next episode. <laughs> uh, in case you haven't noticed, this that ha- that episode did, hasn't come out yet because Mathos hasn't finished a show, and this isn't it. <laughs> um, so, uh, well, because it's funny because we're both watching a shitload of Magical Girl stuff right now. Um, yeah like your group watching sailor moon with someone you're watching you just finished this show daily you're gonna watch card captor soccer daily and then maybe watch more futaro a precure we're both watching princess tutu i'm watching mm-hmm. sailor moon on my own um i'm almost i'm watching healing good precure weekly as it comes out it's almost over and tropical rouge precure starts in a week or so like we're just like having <laughs> we're just feasting on magical girl stuff um so yeah uh, yeah it's and it's a, it's a good. <laughs> and if I got another season of Dorime left, I'm gonna be eating good. <laughs> so, 
uh, I don't know. Uh, Magic Girl stuff, good. Dorami, good. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm trying to go through, because, like, there's always... You know, when we do these discussions, because it's the series is very episodic, there's always, like, one little thing or, like, a couple little things that get missed, because, like, how can you bring up everything? Um, we didn't talk I've... about the opening for this one or the last season, even oh, though they're both fucking God. great. So, <laughs> the opening is is a bop. Like, the opening is easily my favorite. Nobody told me that the <laughs> ending theme was going to make me cry. Nobody told me that the ending theme was it's gonna so do that. Sweet. Uh, they're giving him birthday for Pop. Like, it's even also... though she didn't get a lot, like, we were just talking about how, like, she didn't get as much focus this season as in the last. But then, yeah, she got a whole ending theme just about, like, let's be yeah. ah, <laughs> sweet to Pop. Uh, go yeah, ahead. so, like, the series still found ways to give Pop uh, good good screen time. And also, like, that ED after episode 25 in particular kind of hits oh, a little different. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, we go through an episode where Dory May had that exact conflict uh Mm -hmm. even to a more like advanced degree uh with the whole thing with the birthday party and the cake and you know everybody's there for her and then you see the ed where it's like it's pop doing that and it's like ah (laughs) you were there in front of my face the whole time (laughs) like yeah because the ed didn't change as far as i'm aware um like they didn't add any visuals or stunts no they didn't um but uh yeah no that was because i specifically remember we were we didn't talk about either last time um and uh uh, but uh oh yeah and i guess the way it added to the the witches uh or the the former witch queen queen's predecessor where it's like which is a funny way to refer to it because it's mm-hmm. like 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 in japan in japanese i'm pretty sure it's like a simpler phrase um yeah. where they're like the the second oldest witch queen but like uh, so they have to use like previous witches and successor and in the like to, to refer to like this the, the previous previous one and so that's yeah. just a little funny um but like yeah we got more context into her and her like sort of well like and they tied it to momo which was really good with her losing monroe and like she had to accept like you know she accepted Mon- mm, like accepted yeah. loss and grief that the witch queen the former witch queen wasn't able to and uh because and, and it was it was good um, I like how they tied the because I was even thinking like because I felt like like you had the um, the witch exams going on but it was just like are they gonna be witches or not where it's like I feel like before with the I don't know um, I don't know maybe no maybe I'm just misremembering uh, not nah, yet yeah, like I the, like and there isn't really I guess much ongoing story maybe I'm thinking of season one where there was like the bad items and the general like witch progression um, yeah. but uh, yeah I don't know maybe that's I guess it's n- nothing really changed there so never mind just well what ex- yeah you know, you know what i mean um but uh yeah and there's also like regarding momo i really liked the episode where she uh where she won she was trying really hard to be to become a mama to hana yes um and you see like a lot of her like it, it works for a lot of like good jokes because she's there um reading these books and just getting like super into it um and she's, you know, there's even the part where, like, her parents come in and they're like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm going to become a mama. And they're like, what? Uh, uh, but yeah, and she's like, you know, Hannah's calling her Mo. And she's like, no, you know, she's like, don't call me that. Uh, I, I think she like, maybe she only w- said Momo, but I thought there was also a point where she's like, I want to be mama. Um, and yeah, there's just like a lot of, you also get the part where like, she gets the time to, to babysit Hana and she like, can't be strict. Uh, and so she has that talk with Anpu and it's like, you know, you know, we all kind of have our own different relationships with her and, you know, don't mm-hmm. try to be something you're not try to do best what you can do. Uh, and it's also get that, that little part where like, she's being irresponsible where she's like, no, Hana, you can't have any more pudding. And, Hannah's got like the puppy doll guys and she's like, no, don't do that. And then she just like breaks and she's like, okay, fine. You can have more pudding. And it's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, that was, yeah, that was just, a, it was actually um, in the, when, one of the last episodes of the season where they kind of like, shit, we didn't have fun all year. And it's mm. like, yeah. Cause you think back to all the episodes and it's like, well, we're raising Hannah or we're going to school or like, they didn't do a lot except for the movie. They didn't do a lot of like vacation stuff. So they just sort of like, in the middle of winter, they just like had every season in their in the in the Mahodo, and yeah. uh, that was a that was a silly episode. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, yeah, because there's other stuff I'm still noticing, like um, 
like going back to the stuff with with Aiko again, like she gets a couple different episodes. Um, like there's obviously the stuff with the movie and the first conflict, um, which, uh, th- yeah, the first conflict was the one where like uh, they wanted to like meet up and she wanted to get her mom the cookies. But then there's like the other episode with the sewing machine and mm-hmm. yes. uh, the and her dad losing his job <sighs> and just the whole like conflict of like a parent who can't take care of uh mm-hmm. which i'd imagine is probably very uh you know very fitting for like the lost decade and like adults of that time period who yeah, like I was gonna, yeah, had that right. economic struggle yeah and the sort uh, of so like the ideal this like japanese where... masculine sal- sal- salary man who produ- provides for a sam fat right exactly um, yeah yeah because he's like a, you know like i can't even take care of my kid you know what good of a father am i and so he like tries to you know send her off to live with her mother and uh, obviously, like, her mother is there, like, are you sure this is what you want? Um, and yeah, it's, uh, that was good. And even just, like, the, it's cool how, like, a lot of these episodes will kind of juggle different things, because there's, uh, one of the, one of the episodes about Hana, um, trying to get into vegetables involves the whole thing with, like, the, the sweet potato, Mm -hmm. uh, picking. And it's, it's very good for Aiko, because, like, yeah, she's you able know, to pass down what she was passed by her her family experiences, right? Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Well, I was also going to mention I like I did like how the that episode uh, the early, with her dad losing her job was resolved. Where like Reika just kind of comes in at the end and saves the day, and I'm just like <laughs> Reika. This is this is this is the same character as season one Reika, just like you know who's just very kind of like you know entitled and rich, but then like she has changed, and so she's just like yeah, I'll, I'll help. Uh, you know, my friend by having, you know, so my friend can stay in, uh, the, you know, or, or more friends of friend rather. Or, well, I guess they're still, yeah, it's, they're still friends, but yeah, you know what I mean? Um, where who needs yeah. the economy when you have a token rich character? <laughs> uh, I, I can hear k in the distance. Um, <laughs> I don't know. What I, um, <laughs> but no, it was, uh, uh, the show's really good. <laughs> and, uh, I'm really looking forward. I guess, I, I don't know, do we have more to discuss aside from, uh, I, I mean, we could still talk about one-off episodes or. Uh, hmm. um, I think, I think we hit like all the major character stuff and the, the big standout episodes. They did also, it was less that like, I don't think the series did a ton with it this season, but the introduction of the, the music club um, and especially hmm. the fact that like they have senpai that are, you know, like, they're going to be moving on and it's like, they will become the heads of the club. Yeah. Uh, I imagine right. they're going to do some stuff with, I hope that they do some stuff with that in Dokkan. That's because, yeah, because they'll concerts beca- and like yes. stuff with music is well, uh, oh, an uh, easy trick to just like, uh, to just like hit me in the feels. So it's like, do it. Well, not only that, cause what I'm just remembering is like, yeah, it's not high school graduation, which has its own particular context, but there still will be a graduation in the next season. Yeah. From- and I definitely, it's, um, like in the context of Dory me, um, cause I know like I've, I've seen people discuss in like discussions of the first season, how like, oh, it, you know, and we've talked about it here too, that it's like this perfect encapsulation of childhood and like innocence. Um, and especially like early on, there's not much of a concern about like, uh, because like at that point they were what third graders. So there yeah. wasn't like much of a concern about like the future or whatever. It's just kind of like living the day to day and just kind of enjoying yourself and, you know, yeah, he's still like making progress, uh, you know, like personally, mm-hmm. but, but, you know, like graduating uh, grade school then and like, you know, especially like when they get into junior high and that's when it starts to get a little more serious because like you have to start, you know, thinking about exams high school more seriously because yeah, even high school entrance go exams school. are kind of important. And, right. Yeah. So there is still like, you know, it's not like high school graduation, but there, it, there is still going to be that sense of graduation and like that sense of right there, moving go, on even from... just from elementary to middle school. Like it is still childhood, but there's still like a, a, a change, like instead of like middle school is where you start wearing uniforms, right? Like that's where mm. you, you're, even if you're still a child as a middle schooler, you still have to conform more to an, an adult world. Right. Yeah. Um, so even just that is a change in itself. Um, so it, you know, yeah, I hadn't thought of too much about it, but uh, yet, but because uh, I'm sure we will once we actually watch the show. But uh, yeah, that will presumably be something that will come up uh, because yeah. it will end with their elementary school graduations, which is kind of, I guess, why the show's like ended at a perfect spot because, like, 
Um, like I remember, I f- I forget what where where it came from or where I saw this remark, but someone's wanting like Precure to be more slice of lifey, I guess, like Doremi, and mm. it's like I understand that because Doremi is really fucking good, right? But yeah. it's not Precure. Precure isn't about like having this gradual like growing up journey with all these kids who and this community who stays the same or but with changes from year to year or mm-hmm. you know gradually like Precure is more the iterative like you have one year with these characters and then you move on to a different a one year with different characters right and it's of yeah. course aside from just being an action thing right and so like you know and I just had that thought because like I'm really glad Doremi exists probably possibly because as much as I love Precure. Um, but, you know, it's not Doremi, and Doremi isn't Precure, and I'm glad both can exist. Um, yeah, because that's, like, it, it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about the general structure and the idea that, like, there is this group of girls who are just, like, part of the community, and, like, you can go to them with, you know, if there's something bothering you, and, you know, whether through magic or just through the power of friendship, they'll be there to um, right the ship, they'll be there to, you know, to, to save the day. It's It's quite different from the the precure or really just like any other magical girl series i'm familiar with and like this kind of crosses over in a way with the nature of like how like the mascot characters and how the magic is generally like dealt with because Mm -hmm. um at least from what i've seen like the precure characters have to kind of keep it a secret in a way like i know star twinkle works with that thematically Mm -hmm. later on but you know for the most part it's not like they're kind of doing more their own thing, I guess. Or yeah. like if there is a community aspect to things, it's less that like, cause I'm also thinking of like card capture Sakura and like, yeah, you do have a core group of characters there, but um, they're also kind of, there's a secret, a secrecy to the things they're doing. Um, mm-hmm. So like even there's, isn't really quite something the same as Dory me where it's just that sort of slice of life. Um, I mean, maybe there is something similar to it that I just haven't come across yet. But there aren't well, many things yeah, no. compared because, like, to, like, the stuff. I, it's it's very unique from, like, the things yeah. that I'm coming across at this point. Yeah, because, like, as, as far as my understanding of, like, um, Magical Girl history goes, like, maybe there would be more stuff like Doremi from, especially, because Sailor Moon kind of, like, brought in that sort of, like, tokusatsu action influence, mm-hmm. kind of. And so, like, like because of Sailor Moon, that's kind of why we have Precure now, where Doremi more calls back to before Sailor Moon stuff where like because even before ma- the term magical girl was used there was like Majoko which is like witch girl stuff so like girls mm-hmm. who could use magic right and that's quite co- like and looking at the descriptions of a lot of them a lot of them refer to some kind of like witch world right so like yeah um so Doremi like so but I but I personally I don't think I've seen an ex- uh, anything actually magic like I've seen cutie honey which is like adjacent but it's more like I consider that more like transforming hero it's, it's closer to Toku than it is magical girl stuff um, so I haven't actually seen any magical stuff that predates Sailor Moon, but uh, I don't yeah. know, one day. <laughs> and I'm also not, like, thinking of it as well, like, you know, there might be things before it that were more slice of life, but do they also have the same kind of, like, ensemble cast structure where, like, there is a, yeah, see, a that's, group of I magical think, girls as opposed to just yeah. one quirky girl Because I do who think, because, the... uh, like, I'm, I don't think so, because I think s- what Sailor Moon did it, is it did kind of, like, because ha- Sailor Moon has an ensemble cast, right? So, like, mm-hmm. um, so Doremi kind of, because it does, like, Doremi, it's, it is a magical show, they are witch girls, but it is also a magical girl show, right? Um... So it's like it's taking sort of that like post magical girl post Sailor Moon magical girl stuff where you have these teams color coded and some of the characters. is a deconstruction of magical girls, <laughs> but it's also right, taking like more setting aspects from the pre Sailor Moon magical girl shows of like the witch world and the witch girl magical coast stuff. I I think this is just like looking from the outside and just like reading the descriptions of a lot of these older stuff because I haven't watched them myself. So I definitely feel like Doremi does exist in a unique space as far as magical girl stuff goes because like mm-hmm. a lot of what it was even like what, what has come out afterwards and even came out in the decade beforehand was very much like action focused right or leaning more towards action right yeah um where it, it like so the stuff that existed before sailor moon might have been a little bit more like Doremi, but also wasn't quite as like long right so Doremi does sort of have that like unique blend i think um and of course yeah the earlier stuff might not have had the ensemble casts as much uh, so again, we're all like, I guess, you know, this is like an outside look on shows that, uh, I will hopefully try to get around to eventually. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I see it's, it's funny. Cause like, I'm interested in both magical girls and tokusatsu, but since I did like my big tokusatsu month, I'm like way more interested in magical girl stuff, like as a genre and like what mm. the commonalities and, and history of it than I am toku, I guess. 
Uh, I don't know why specifically, but uh, uh, like I hope to do videos on both. But uh, I'm just more interested in like more like general broad perspective, like ma Magic Girl stuff. That like I already did the broad token video, and it was just a recommendation, I guess. So. Uh, I don't know, random uh, note regarding, like, how I feel about, like, talking about both on my channel, I suppose. Uh, but uh, we are supremely off topic. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I think, uh, you know, you know you, uh, we understood, or I understood what, you, you know, yeah, Doremi does seem to exist in this unique space as far as, like, Magical Girl stuff goes. Um, and I'm glad that it that was able to happen, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say, or what I'm trying to add I'm, to I'm what ready you're for Dokkan to destroy me. Yeah, I'm, I was going to say, maybe I'm not ready. Um, <laughs> uh, and I don't know what Nai's show is going, like, what is it? I'm afraid. Um, it's it's like a specter that's going to destroy us even yeah, all, more. Yeah, all I know is that, like, the Nai show episodes take place in between Moto and Doremi. Or they That's take all our, I know. Or during during Moto is uh yeah um, but uh, well okay then the description I read was incorrect. <laughs> well, because like they take place like also across the uh, the year I suppose. Um, mm. But like like well and I even said like there's no like the the, the description I read it even said that like uh, you know the continuity is not airtight in the first place so uh, Night Show doesn't really add uh, or the, mm. you know it's a, but it's like it's 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 fine like oh no what are we gonna do like ah, there's a plot hole ah! <laughs> <laughs> that's not really our style I mean not since uh, Naruto. <laughs> but uh anyway uh thank you for listening um it sounds like we're about done um i don't know what's next uh maybe card captor sakura maybe futaro wa precure uh maybe dokan uh maybe all three in sequence <laughs> uh i have no idea oh princess tutu might happen uh i don't i don't know um i feel like princess Tutu. that is probably next if, yeah if we are able to talk about it in a podcast form that'll probably be the next thing yep uh we'll see how that goes so anyway thank you for listening and we will see you next time